Battle. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. It's game number two here, actually, of uh, the LIB Grand Finals. The score is currently 2-0 uh, to BVD Emotion. And uh, the reason it's game number two and they're 2-0 up, winner's bracket advantage kicking in. And my name is Luxwell. Joining me for this wonderful uh, LAN event, day number three, is going to be uh, Demonic once again. Thank Welcome, Demonic. The draft is going very quickly. Both teams got up to this stage when Scans PC actually... Uh, someone reset the power, but here we go. I guess uh, they're gonna. We're gonna have to see how Bravado Emotion is gonna deal with the Batrider pick. Are we gonna see that Disruptor come out? Maybe the Shadow Demon as well, or Vengeful Spirit. All excellent counters to to, to Batrider. And the other question is, who's gonna be playing this Batrider? Are we gonna be seeing it as in the off lane? Are we gonna be seeing uh, Random Hero holding onto this? Maybe moving it towards the jungle? Or option B, are we gonna be seeing it in the mid lane with uh, this is Doron? Also known as Shanks. From what I've seen of NG Esports, and thanks for thanks for letting me come along, uh, nice one, Ben. Uh, good to be here. But uh, what I've seen from NG Esports, uh, Random Hero, I think, generally plays the bat rider in the off lane. So I think for the moment we can assume that will most likely be an off lane hero. But BBD followed up with an extremely strong combo in the form of Bane and Marana. The sleep yeah. arrow setup is just uh, devastating when it lands. Also, what's quite interesting is the sleep onto the target that's being like initiated upon. Mm -hmm. The whole idea with Batrider is you jump and you lasso, you four stuff away, and straight away like the you just go on that, you go ham on that uh, on that single target. You mm -hmm. know, that's all you have to do, just burst it down. And the uh, the one second of invulnerability that Bane's Nightmare gives, along with Fiend's Grip going onto the Batrider, can really really turn fights around. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to see how energy going to play this. Like you said, it's most likely going to be offlane Batrider, but they have uh, they have potential to to do to do more crazy things. Okay, so energy esports pick up a Doom, which is also another random hero. Hero, um, he played Doom yesterday in the in the offlane as a solo role. So maybe we're going to be seeing Clitzy Bananas grabbing it up this yeah. time. I mean, Clitzy farming, you know, it's it it suits him. Uh, Viper getting banned out by energy. I think they're just wanting. They, oh, they're hoping to have a favorable matchup mid for Seam. Last game we saw him just get out of control. I mean, he died <laughs> like in a very, very uh, reckless situation. Yeah, and and to a uh, to a good error from Clitzy Bananas coming out uh, from his uh, bottom. So Seam did really well, and I think that Energy Esports are going to be looking towards a slightly more favorable matchup definitely this time compared to compared to last time, but. Uh, yeah, I think that's Bravado's longest game in this tournament has been about 30 minutes or th maybe more. Maybe last game kind of just bordered on that, but maybe 40 minutes has been the longest game that we've seen Bravado Motion have this tournament. They had absolute throbbing of uh, of Liberty uh, yesterday. It was 24 minutes of game time over two matches. Yeah. 13 and a half in game one and 10 and a half in game number two. So, yeah, I think that they they're definitely hoping to just seal the deal. As uh, as quickly as possible, and yeah, uh, I I think they're definitely expecting to win this as uh, as soon as possible. Just hoping to make this a 3-0 and uh, move on to to greater things in life, such as watching football. Yeah. But um, but there are great prizes on offer here, as uh, Energy Esports has uh, one of their primary sponsors, also one of the sponsors of the tournament, Steel Series. So it'd be really nice, I think, for them if they managed to at least pick up a game or two here. Although Bravado Gaming haven't dropped a single game in competitive so South African 2 tournaments at all. Like, not a game. Not a match. Just yeah, not, not a, a game, game. yeah. <laughs> like, True. That, that, that's pretty huge. They've never really looked... Um, I think there was one instance where they were not in the lead of a game, I think, during the DGL Summer League. But I think it was only for a few minutes, and then they soon, soon took things out of the control. I mean, this... this the strength of the side almost knows no bounds on the local scene. Mm. Just seem to, just seeming to uh, be happy to deal with whatever local sides bring to the table. And they got to actually pick up an axe as their third pick. I think the first game between Energy and Bravado was very respectable by yeah. Energy. I don't think that was in any way uh, comparable to the slam dunks that we've that we've seen BBD Emotion do in yeah. DGL. But um, yeah, this is uh, bands coming out to. Uh, we saw Axe get uh, picked up as the second, first pick of the second phase is after the bans coming out. Nature's Profit by Energy, they don't want Flares to do what he did in the last game. 
I think he might be the axe player, though. Possibly. I mean, Scant also yeah. likes to play it, so does Habibi. And, uh, yeah, Ancient Apparition, Visage. Visage is a hero that Scant really likes to play as well. So, with Bane Potom up, I think we're going to see Flares maybe on the Marana. Or possibly even seen on, on that hero. So I think that, as a result, they might push the axe into one of the supports. Dazzle gets picked up here. So, of the heroes here, Axe is certainly the lowest in terms of relevance in the international metagame. Yeah. But it's not by any means a, a horrible hero. I think the Dazzle is just as much a ban, a good pick by energy, as it is denying the pick. Essentially a pseudo ban on Bravado. Yeah, I mean, Dazzle, one of the most popular supports in this version, and you can see exactly why. Shadow Grave is an incredible spell. Weave is also an amazing spell, especially uh, being able to weave the Doom. In your own team fights, just to give him that additional armor, just to tank him up as much as possible, and also uh, get rid of the armor on BBD Emotion. So Dazzle, I think, is going to be a really good pickup for Energy Esports, and and Zero plays a plays a really good Dazzle, so that'll most likely be his hero. And we're actually going to see a Magnus coming out from uh, BBD Emotion. A, save for the axe, this is a very very signature LIB draft. They really like the Magnus, they really like the Potom, and Bane is one of the supporters, also something they do quite a lot of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Raping Ninja's Potom is well known amongst the local community for being something that you don't really want to face if you're going to play against that LRB FOJ side. Yeah, but Burado let him pick Morana yesterday yeah. and and they just dunked it pretty much. And we're going to see a Morphling pickup come up from Energy Esports. Do you think that's going to be Klitsi Banana's hero? I have a feeling that Klitsi is going to be playing the Morphling. Yeah. But I think that it's, it wouldn't be unrealistic to expect that we see the Morphling mid in the hands of the Sisteron and the Doombringer be played by Klitsi and then a random hero in the offlane with the Batrider. The ban is Rubik. I think that's a solid ban given the support to Dazzle. Would be very aggressive, able to make a lot of kills. So, fair ban there. Yeah, and Rubik is never something that you want to see against uh, Magnus, just because uh, Rubik can uh, steal that RP and turn team fights around quite easily. And we have seen it before and we know how that story ends. And it's just yeah. something that you don't want to deal with when you're playing as a Magnus. So Timbersaw is going to be the final ban for Energy Esports. So they're thinking that Provider Emotion are looking for an offlane here. And it's actually going to be a Shadow Fiend last pick. And crazy draft coming here. I think Seam wants that, uh, wants that Shadow Fiend for himself in mid. We'll have to see who grabs it. Donnie also a huge fan of it. And yeah, the question is Donnie, Flares and Seam. Those are the three guys who came from Energy Esports at the beginning of the season. And those are going to be the three cores for War. Well, those are the three cores for the Bravado lineup mm -hmm. now. So the question is, you know, how are we gonna, how are the heroes gonna be laned around them? How are they gonna be allocated across them? I mean, Bane is certainly a support. I think we're probably gonna be seeing Axe as a support here. And as a result, Scant on the Bane, a BB on the Axe, I think makes the most sense. Last pick coming in here. What's your, what's your opinion on it? Is what support gonna be Crystal Maiden? Maybe, maybe that Shadow Demon once again. Yeah, I think they just need. Uh Bravado Emotions lanes are very open. I mean, they have a lot of options in terms of what they can run, so it's going to be really difficult. They're going to go for a Clockwork. Okay, so Clockwork is... Uh, I actually quite like the Clockwork pick here. Combined yeah, with the Backrider and the they Doom. Needed, mm. They needed something which could take out the Bane, and yeah. as a result, we're going to see Backrider in the mid, we're going to see Doom in the jungle, and Clockwork going to be the one heading to the off lane here. So this time it's Energy going for the greedy lineup. Let's, um, let's wait until we, we load into... To the game before we we see who does it looks what. like greedy like uh, seam is playing the axe yeah my daughter just lagged as everyone loaded and there was a little bit of a swap as you as you uh indicated there and apparently everything i click is control now ah oh, there we go fixed up but uh yeah a little bit of a switcheroozy happening there on the uh, bravado emotion side Let's, I'll take us through the Bravado side. We got Seam is going to be on the axe. He's got Ring of Protection and the Star Shield. He's possibly going to be heading into the jungle here, actually. Shaquille O'Neal standing in the RTZ spot. So Donnie is going to be trying to bench more than RTZ. And uh, Magnus is going to be in the hands of Abdur, also known as Let's Get Farty, or Mr. Assman is his uh, more common name. We have Scant, as expected, on the Bane. And uh, Flores is going to be on the Marana. I mean, that's a little glitch on the high ground here, but it's, yeah, it's going to be safe lane Marana, and it's going to be off lane Magnus, I mean, that much is uh, almost guaranteed, but 
Seam is going to be in the jungle here, not playing in his signature role mid. Or maybe he is going to be like dual laning mid with Donnie. We've seen crazier things come out of this uh, Bravado Emotion side when they really want to troll. Yeah, and on the side of Energy Esports, we're going to have Zira uh, taking up that Dazzle as expected. We're going to have Blob, uh, who is Shanks, going to be playing the Bush Doom. Oh, Let's Get Party, sorry. I mix, always mix the twins. Uh, Clitz of is going to be on that safe lane Morphling. A hero that I'm sure that he's going to be happy to play. This is Doran, it's going to be middle against... Uh, Gonna be middle against that Shadow Fiend on the Batrider. Uh, this, this is actually a very favored matchup for the Batrider. And uh, Nosebleeds, aka okay, Random Hero, is gonna be going towards bottom on that Clockwork. Yeah, Clockwork is maybe gonna have a hard time here. Cogs are very, very effective against a lot of lineups, but m meaning, like, it's just it makes such an easy setup for a Morana Arrow. Mm -hmm. We could possibly see an early level on uh, on the Flame Break here, which is, I feel, quite important against. Uh, against the SF just being able to once you get enough stacks to push him back towards you so that you can uh, basically just firefly him to death and we've seen that happen and we know how it ends yeah this is a uh, as I said earlier a really really hard lane for Batrider to to lose you have to you have to see some really sick players come bottom might be in some trouble the arrow's gonna come in but they're just gonna harass for now I think both heroes are just level one Ooh. All the cogs goes off, and that that may just get him killed. That's gonna be first blood. Yeah, random here. I think making a huge mistake. They're trying to cogs. I, I think, think he could just run. To, he's just trying to get out and then trying to bounce scan back to break the mana because nightmare costs quite a lot of mana, and they really, really don't want. Uh, he doesn't want to get caught up by that once Flurry's hits level six or like yeah. five or six, and has level three star four. So. He's going to be heading back off to that off lane, but he just needs, I think, needs to be a little bit careful. The Bane bottom combo is not going to get any easier as they get more levels into that. Uh, Bane's already hit level 2 and he's going to most likely pull here. So he should have level 3 fairly soon. The region ring gets pinged out in the bot lane. It's going to be a random hero. Possibly true, going to try to steal that up. He is scouting it for now. There's a bottle up on uh, on the bat right in. Shadowfiend's gone for the magic stick and the Wraith Band before bottle. Not wanting to contest the runes. I think until you have like boots, maybe even mm -hmm. treads up, you really don't want to be running around in a situation where one or two stacks can get off onto you. No, it's not going to be uh, not going to be fatal for you. I think SF for the moment just wants to stay as safe as possible. I mean, he's get, got so many stacks of. Uh, he had five stacks on him there. It's just getting so many uh, stacks of sticky napalm that he can't really afford to try go for those runes just because the bat rider will most likely kill him uh, if he tries. Seam is going to grab that regen by the looks of things. Yeah, he's going to be snagging that up. I think Clockwork said, okay, well, there's a bottle uh, to, his, to his bat rider. He's got a bottle. There's a regen rune here. And bat, bat rider's like, okay, I'm not only time pressure because... Um, Nosebleeds is in trouble again. Jennifer doesn't actually um, doesn't actually have a deal. Nosebleeds taking a lot of damage. One or two hits and... Lioness picks up his first kill of the game. Scant was the one who grabbed that uh, the first kill, the first blood. Mm -hmm. So great start here for Bravado. Magnus hasn't died in their offlane. They've managed to pick off the enemy offlane twice. And uh, Mirana going the the one two one build, maxing out Sacred Arrow. Thing that we see Flores do more than in most of the other big pot and players in this country, such as Disappoint or or even uh, our good friend over on uh, the Fudge side, Raping Ninja. Yeah, well, when you have an easy setup like Bane, um, it's pretty much worth it just to max the arrow because the arrow does a s huge amount of damage if it actually lands. And if you've just got the sleep setup, which makes it so easy to do just that, then the amount of damage that will come out from a secured arrow is going to show the kill almost every time. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but you know, it's, it doesn't scale as well as Garpo, yeah. and a double hits is just, you know, huge. If you can hit, like, shoot arrow, hit arrow then you should take arrow, but I don't think you should ever level it like this aggressively over Starfall. It, the damage only scales up by... I mean, it does scale up better than than the damage on uh, on the, the Starfall, but Starfall's like, you know, 100% guaranteed. Yeah. He's decided to go 2-2, two, two, actually. He's got 2 in Starfall, 2 in Starfall, so he hasn't decided to max either of them, which is quite, uh, quite unusual, to say the least. You generally see 3-1-3-1 three, uh, one, three, one, or 3-1-1. Scant looks like he wants to gang middle.
Blob has managed to pick up that uh, that unholy aura, so he's doing just fine in the bush. He's got 500 gold in the bank. Yeah, I want to know if he's going to go for mech or what's he really going to go for. Fez boots up on the shadow pin now. And uh, some nice denies coming in. Let's have a quick look at the last set of denies. Clipsy Banana is 29 for 11, Shadow Fiend on 27 for 8, 20 for 10, and there's a lot of damage coming off here. The Brent. Oh, nice flame break actually. And the final raise, Donnie just slam dunks. This is Doron into uh, into the ground. And uh, he's got uh, his magic wand up. He's had that for a while actually. He's going to. Magic stick rather. They're going to turn into magic wand, one would expect. But, yeah, I think that. Both teams playing an ultra greedy here. Seem being in the jungle for a fair t amount of time here, and he's got tranquil boots right behind him. He's doing that same abuse. We can hear a lot of cheering actually coming out of the Call of Duty guys. He's doing the same thing that we saw uh, Mr. Assman do, dropping the tranquil boots so that you don't break them for 12 seconds. Yeah. And then jungling for a few seconds, putting the map back up. The only problem with that is that you do lose a little bit of uh, armor, a little bit, a little bit of armor, and a little yeah. bit of passive regen. Is there still passive regen on tranquils? Mm, I felt I, I feel like they've taken taken the passive off and it's just twelve HP per second when they're on now. I may be wrong though. I'm often wrong. Oh yeah, I thought that there was like oh yeah 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 you're right. It used to be a small amount of default regen and then that got a lot bigger. Yeah. Once uh, once you got more up. In it. So er early Midas pick up. Yes, I was right. Early Midas pick up on on Clitzy Bananas, and he's really used that. So he's going to be uh, having no problem farming in this lane. He's pretty much got free farmers. 40, 40 CS at six minutes, so he's doing perfectly fine in this top lane. And um, Habibi here, going to be uh, just trying to disrupt the pulls. He doesn't have any levels up and empowered, but he does have a nice TD ring here, so he's going to try to pick them off as much as possible. Poison touch goes onto him. He's going to be able to skewer right down here. And but Blob is waiting for the... And he's got a stomp, so he may be able to get the kill over the Scorched Earth. So yeah, good Ray, good prediction Ray, from uh, from Doom. And that's the first kill on the board for Energy Esports. They are currently 3-1 down, but... They are hoping to make a big comeback this game and... Force it to a fourth and maybe a fifth game. And, uh, the sleep and the... The stun comes forward, uh, arrow easy for, for Morana there, Starfall on top of that. Nice ah. play by him there. Clockwork's really not having a good time in this offlane. Yeah, I mean, he's died, what, three times? Mm -hmm. So three of the four deaths are on, on him. Yeah, and the one other death going to the, the bat rider, actually, in mid, so... Donnie doing really well, he hasn't died here, I mean, he's sitting at 49 CS, top of the board, actually. Just spamming what he can, and... Getting the CS, he's got uh, his max souls, so Doran is having a bit of a bit of bit trouble. He's got 22 last hits, but Donnie's almost doubled him by now. Over doubled him, in fact. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the net worth because Clipsy Bananas with that minus up, it could change things up. It doesn't actually, in fact. Donnie is on the top. There's going to be a fiend script here. One click, two click, nice raise. The final raise, and Donnie gets another kill there. So he's sitting pretty at 2-0, and he's going at Shadow Blade Vault. Let's have a move back to last set uh -huh. of the knives because with all these deaths coming around the map might uh, might actually you know not a net worth can be a little bit deceiving in how yeah. well the land's going for them in terms of just you know they might be farming like a king but getting just ganged out by bravado yeah. or by energy. Knoxville's just doing what he can in the bush yet. Just he's got his level six, so reverse polarity is up. No, no, you can't. This is Habibi. He's just smithing. Uh, what, a, what a fraud! What a fraud! Yeah. Sorry, I keep on. I just see your name and I immediately think Ben. What a Mr. Assman, what a fraud. Get out. Guys from Durban, just frauding. And Batrider takes uh it's taken down, it is a deny by Batrider and they're looking like they want to counter engage on Shadow Fiend. Doom pops off a smoke. And I think that the Shadow Fiend definitely would have seen that. You can see that the Bravada guys are going to moving here towards like the high ground. They want to hold on to the high ground if possible. And seems that have just done a nice pull over here. Tranquil Boots lying on the ground, if they pick it up, he'll be in a lot of trouble. Shadow Fiend is... Shadow Fiend, and Doom going to go up onto him as well, and that's stun coming out by Blop. And he's just going to die out here. A really nice pick up. An arrow coming here, it's going to dodge the Flying Vision Batrider. Really helping out there. Seem just died to a neutral. His Tranquil Boots are lying on the ground. 
I think these are probably going to get denied. No, I'm joking. <coughs> They're going to get picked up here by Flair. Funny. He was definitely watching the what was happening mm -hmm. there more. He wasn't paying attention to what he was having, and the Centaur ticked him down. And Scan's moving around here, trying to get into position to get a sleep off onto nosebleeds. Someone's pinging like crazy. Oh, it's a uh, random hero just saying that. No, no, it's Axe. I think it's Axe pinging on uh, Marana saying, Why are oh, you okay. yeah. Give me my boots back. <laughs> Lioness has dropped the triangle boots right in front of the tower. This is cheeky. Yeah, trying to bait it out. Maybe we'll see a hook shot in it or not. No, he picks him up and he's refusing to give him back to see him. There we go. No, he picks him up again. <laughs> And uh, now the push is coming in on the bottom tower here. Flores is, is uh, just getting into a position where he can maybe shoot a little arrow down the side to catch someone up through the tree line. He's he tanking the tower quite a lot. He's got 1300 gold. I think he's going to go straight for that blink dagger. The score is 5 to 3. And uh, the gold advantage, 4000 going the way of Bravado. As we see, Magnus is also just picking up those arcane boots. So pretty decent for an offlane Magnus, 10 minutes in. would like to see that Blink Dagger coming out on him as well in uh, the next couple of minutes if possible. Yeah, he should have no problem just spamming spamming to get some creep kills from now on with those mana boots. And he's got the bottle if he needs to bottle Crow as well. Which might be... I think the Crow is coming up at the most just uh, bringing Scant. And Magnus may be in a little bit of trouble. He's got Scant uh, for backup. Yeah, they're, tr they're just trying to do something here onto Clitzy Bananas. Sleep going off into him. Fiend's grip onto zero. This should be a maybe a free kill straight away. RP comes out. And just one hit's gonna be required. I think Scan could have just punched him. Yeah. The only, the only problem is as the punch was as the, the animation was in the air, we could have seen maybe a shallow grave or a heal. And Steam ulting and creep to take it away. They take the tower in the bottom lane. Flares up to sixteen hundred gold. And I wonder what he's gonna go for next. Seam has picked up his blink dagger. It's two ultis used, the RP and the Fiend's group were used just to kill the Dazzle there. So Clissy Bananas is going to feel a little bit safer here for the meantime. He's picked up a Ring of Health, so he's going to be probably looking towards his Lincolns as soon as possible. Scan's rotations on this Bane have been absolutely outstanding, though. Yeah, certainly. The Doombringer also hasn't uh, really just, you know, got as many like actual last hits on creeps, but he's done, I think, a pretty fantastic job in this mm -hmm. round. 35 creeps up. Got involved in two kills that he's secured. One on the SF and... Uh, who was the second one on? Uh, I am... Oh, oh, it, oh, it was on Magnus top. Yeah. Tried to escape out there. But Shadowfiend moving into the top lane. He's got Shadow Blade up now, just to match the name. And Bravado making plays in two separate places. They're making... Move towards top from from two separate angles here. Maybe they're going to try catch up, let's be honest. Who does have a replicant waiting at, uh, at the tier 1 tower here. I think they're going to try bait out, uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to try go, oh no, they're going, oh, Shaq O'Neal uses his ulti on a, on a replicate. So that's a, Shadowfiend's ulti is going to be down for the next 90 seconds, 100 seconds. I don't think that's a huge concern, I mean, they're not looking to have 5v5 fights, they do have Magnus uh, RP on cooldown for another 10 seconds, they want this tower more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Once you're taking this tower... We'll see what's going to happen after that, I guess. It looks like Drum's coming up here by Lioness. Uh, Flores going for for that. Oh, Blink getting revealed out here. They're going to grab him up. But a Blink in by Seam as well. And RP is going to be available in a few seconds. Is it going to be used to skewer? Just taking him to the side. And RP goes on him. They're going to use that to get out. Seam gets brought down. And uh, Lioness is going to try to deny himself. Doesn't manage to deny himself. Two kills going the way. And a buy Sorry, three kills going the way. And buyback coming out. So a 3 for 2 trade with a buyback from Seam. He's going to slow down his next item a little bit here. But he did have that Blink Dagger before, and he's putting pressure in the mid lane here. He wants to just finish this match off as soon as he possibly can. I don't yep. think he's spun in a very long time, by the way. <laughs> Good, no. Uh, the, RNG doesn't seem, the RNG doesn't seem to be with him on this axe. But it's a good engagement, uh, showing off the Blink Dagger for the first time on the Batrider. Managed to pick up a kill on, on Flares, which I think is totally worth it. I mean... He's, managed to, he's picked up a drum, so Flares is going to be going for that drum, so he slowed them down a little bit. Yeah. But I think the other I think the other parts are on the courier. No, they're not. Okay. Yeah, with the drum recipe being re reworked in the last patch or two, it is a situation now where the, the recipe is some, like actually for supports a lot harder to just be yeah. able to get. 
I mean, extra bit of gold. It does give you the second charge. So the Shaco Neil's got 2,000 gold on top of his Shadow Blades. So, I mean, he's doing extremely well in terms of farm. He's getting a Yasha or Desolator or yeah. nothing. And Clitsy Bananas has picked up 86 creeps. It isn't the most in the game. Looks like they want to make a play on him. Blink call is going to be... Oh, the dunk doesn't work. And Shallow Grave does go off there. They get the sleep onto Zero. I think they might just try to make this into a big play on him. Brain Snap and some right clicks. Great uh, Shallow Grave there by Clitsy Bananas. Mm -hmm. But a misjudgment by by Seam as there are plays made in the bottom lane. It is going to be Habibi that's going to take the fall here. Doombringer came, coming out and dooming. Oh, there is actually not. There's going to be a response. Maybe the flame oh. break pushes him away, but the bottle is going up on him here. Doom is possibly in a little bit of trouble, but it seems like Scan just wants to run away. Doesn't have enough mana to do very much more. There's the, the, this constant pressure in the top lane here. And Seam's in a very awkward situation. The hook shot by uh, Nosebleed is going to whiff completely. And one big hit happening there as uh, Seam is still lurking in the jungle here. Oh, that rocket Maybe. flare just didn't see him. Oh, it was so close. I think they still like are aware that he could possibly be there. Yeah. But Sonny has ulti, but not enough mana here, and they're going to not actually engage. Seam used the call, but didn't use the blink, so... Just uh, getting those trees to attack him while he hides, it, hides in the bush. He's going to get out, though. Yeah, Culling Blade, by the way, can go through uh, Shadow Grave, don't yeah. forget. It, two reasons why it does that. I'll let you have a guess at, so, as to what, like, one of them. Uh, the way that it, the way that it used to... Oh, Sun coming forward onto zero. We'll have to get back to him in yeah. a second. He's just going to get uh, brought down by Marana. There's a Batrider that's come off the back of it onto the Shadow Fiend. And we're going to see Donnie take the fall here. But he does take down the Batrider with him. In fact, it was the Batrider who died first. That's really, really bad for the Batrider. Not getting experience from that necessarily. Not being around to, to lap up all this experience moving forward. Yeah, so Culling Blade used to go through... Oh, oh we've got more engagements. There's no arrow for a short while here. The stun coming off. But now it's hook shot over there by Nosebleeds. Keeps two in, one out. Sorry, two out, one in. And Magnus is just going to try and move back here. Seam gets the poison touch, but a blink call. The dunk goes on to the Shallow Graves uh, clockwork there. And we're just going to see one more click onto him. As Clinton Bananas tries to come forward now, but he doesn't have fighting items. He's got his treads up, but Midas isn't going to help him fight, really. As uh, there is an RP here on, on Habibi. They're going to bring down Seam, but is the is Habibi going to be caught down here as well? Scan's going to get the sleep off on him, and maybe we're going to see a TP out from one of them. No, no TPs on either of Naughty supports. Yeah, we do have Lasu up on... Uh... On Doron, but his Firefly is down for the moment. He's gonna go on Linus anyway. I think Clitsy Manana does he have enough mana to get all the pounds? And Doran goes down, and Flares manages to survive on absolutely nothing. He's gonna try Arrow, but he's being extremely cheek. Oh, the rocket just misses. Arrow's gonna go off on Blob, so he's not gonna be able to catch up to the bottom, and Flares should be safe for now. Yeah, so the two possible answers, I'll just have to spoil it for you. First of all, the way in which uh, the Shallow Grave used to work in Dota 1, yeah. and how it's been moved across, is that it, it provides you with a heal for um, with a, like every bit of damage you would take. It provides you with a heal for that amount. That's how it's scripted to work. If it would kill you, that is. And uh, unfortunately, oh, Shadow Fiend getting a nice pick off and Dazzle in the top lane. He's going to go balls to the walls on Clitsy Bananas, but Clitsy, I think, could have fought that. And um, the other issue is just that like the amount that it can heal you is is not more than like there's a fixed limit on how much it possibly can heal you in one is like second of game time and unfortunately culling blade does like a million damage of uh, physical damage and the other option is just it removes all debuffs so yeah there was i remember when axe uh, when warlock first started coming to competitive play there was a bug in yeah. dota 1 with the culling blade and that if you got the if you managed to culling blade someone that happened to be Linked, fatal yeah, it's fatal bonds. You it's killed fatal. the entire team because it did nine, 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 nine damage. Oh. We've got to see an initiation on nosebleeds here uh, on the clockwork. He's gonna get both of them in the cogs. So, oh, this is not gonna be. There is no RP. The silence goes. The doom goes off. So Knoxville actually just gonna go down. Clits with um, random hero goes down in the meantime. But seems is gonna try TP out and there's all oh, oh. the mini stun. 
Arrow does land. Flares is coming in. He's got scans on the outskirts as yet. The Shallow Grave goes off, but Flares immediately just gets shackled by the by the uh, Bat Rider and maybe in some trouble. Yeah, he's used his leap and he's just going to go down. He leaped in and fed a little bit. But, oh, Zero's uh, going to die in three hits. Yeah. To kill O'Neill, hitting like a truck, he's going for Scardia as his first like damage item. They're going to put pressure on the bottom tire. The score is 18 to 12. Gold advantage, about 10,000 going the way of Bravado. And they really are looking like they're going to try to seal this in 3-0 fashion. Yeah, it's going to be up to Energy Esports to to make the plays from now on. I mean, they're just uh, if you look at the golden XP graph, it's just getting a little bit out of hand. It's slowly coming back in in favor of, of Energy East War, slowly but surely. They have been getting good trades. And the one other thing to say is also, Axe hasn't taken a single level in Blink and Battle Hunger. That could really, really be devastating on the Blink dagger on the, on the Clockwork, oh, sorry, on the Bat Rider. Scans in a little bit of trouble. He tries to use uh, Fiend's Grip to get out of it, but he's going to get brought down by three heroes here. So, two heroes dead at the moment for Bravada. Now one comes back alive. It's just going to be uh, all scanned feeding on the sidelines side at the moment. He's actually having a fantastic feed this game, um, sitting at 3 for one Yeah, that's his first death for the game. I mean, he's... No, no, it's Scant. He's feeding. Oh, is he feeding? Death. Okay. So, good feed coming out of Scant. He's doing the heavy lifting as the solo support pretty much this game. Seema is... Seema, I don't think is very talented at buying wards, um, Ooh, yeah, for the Donnie's most part. But Donnie's in trouble. Yeah, Doom goes off onto him. They trap up the... Uh, the, the pot of ulti, but I don't think it's going to be enough here. He's going to get caught out and he's going to die. Nice work over there. See him blink calls onto two and he gets hookshotted by, by nosebleeds. A nice arrow going to come forward here as uh, Shallow Grave goes onto the bat rider. He's not going to actually die here unless players get good positioning. Here comes Scans on the side as a uh, shot coming forward. Zero is going to take the fall. So it's going to be a two for two trade, but definitely favoring Ian. They lose their mid and a support for the carry essentially, but although mid player. Of, uh, of DVD emotion and a jungler, so slightly favorable in that regard, but with a third hero dying, definitely going for Vada's way after that. Doombringer picks up his Blink Dagger. I think he's going to be wanting to keep this uh, War Stomp for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future. Maybe once Morphling does a lot of damage, he'll get the Alpha Wolf just for the, the crit chance, but well, now he's going to stick with the Blink Stun, the Mini Ravage, as many people call it. I think if, I think if Blob actually... Uh had enough mana for his mech there, that fight could have turned out slightly differently. Being able to keep the Bat Rider alive for those extra couple of seconds yeah. may have been able to bring down Freya. So really unlucky that he didn't have enough mana, but he's got his Blink Dagger now, so he's now going to be really good at initiating with that uh, Hoof Stomp. And even if Ian have proven, proven that they can uh, Hoof Stomp for the best of them. He, oh. Ian have also proven, and yeah. bananas get slept up here. Going to get brought down at the last second there. Really unlucky by him. He was morphing strength, trying to TP away. Scant coming in with uh, with that nightmare, just punishing him up. So Mr. Asmans managed to pick up his blink dagger. So we're going to have a blinking Magnus in this next fight. And it's a, I think it's going to be pretty much up to Clockwork to try and stop that RP from happening on his entire team. He's got the he's got the skills to be able to do it. Oh, we, Arrow's actually going to land on door and bottom. Blaze is not going to do anything with it, but he's picked up a Ghost Scepter. He's going to use that to just try to run away here. The pressure coming in top, the Shadow Fiend with the Empower on from the Magnus. He's just pushing so, so quickly. This tier 2 tower is going to take a lot of chip damage, I think, before they're able to respond. They initiate on Seam. Doom goes off on him. There's two ultimates, three ultimates blown just wow. to bring him down as effectively as they possibly can. And this might open Roshan up for uh, Team Energy. Yeah, they are going to look to do the rush on here. I'm not... Moonlight Shadow uh, has gone off, uh, but BB Blue don't really seem to be making their way towards the the pits at all. But Ian are just going to back out. I don't feel like they're confident enough to take that rush on at the moment. Black Riders managed to pick up his, uh, his four staff as well, so hmm. he's got his initiation tools. Yeah, he's probably going to need to get an HP item here, maybe BKB. Mm -hmm. Needs to be able to not die straight away. I mean, they do have... We've seen some really good Shallow Graves coming out by the Dazzle, which has kept him alive in previous fights. But it hasn't been that amazing. The Blink Dagger is up, by the way, on Magnus. I don't know if we've seen... If we've called that out. Yeah. But I think we could be seeing some huge... Uh, some huge slams coming forward here. 
Yeah. And huge RPs. It's gonna be up to Clockwork to to stop those RPs from happening for the most part right. with rockets and hooks. Yeah, the positioning over here is just so so weird. By uh, the Mar 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 actually gone S blade first up. Okay, so she's just yeah, she had the ghost steps at first, and she's just picked up the the eagle song. So she wants to do as much magical damage as possible, which makes it even more viable for for a BKB to happen. Although you can F blade uh, if the guy is in BKB, so. And a little probing arrow gonna hit on the Clockwork. I think they could dive this. Seam, where's Seam? Is he gonna go in? He is gonna go in. And it's gonna be a slam dunk going through the shallow grave. Zero taking a lot of damage. He's used the shallow grave, so he can't do much. There's a lot of damage going off as the RP gets uh, gets blown there. Clitsy Banana is not doing very much in this fight. And Lionhead's gonna take the fall. Actually, maybe not. That shed. Oh, no, it definitely is going to as Clitsy comes through. And uh, the Magnus just standing still there trying to skew out. Gonna get brought down, so a 4 for 2, a nice hold over there by Energy on the high ground. And buyback straight away by Marana. He's moving his way back and he's using ulti. I think he's gonna try and make a play on Clipsy Bananas here. He's morphing his into agility and could be a little bit of a problem here. Oh, he's waves oh, away. Oh, spider sense goes off. Oh, the stun gonna be dodging here. <laughs> spider sense goes off Clipsy Bananas. He manages to get away. He's picked up his Lincoln Sphere, so he's getting some farm underneath his belt. But really good play from the Doom in that last team fight, managing to blink in and get a stomp on three, um, at a really good time because Batrider's fire was still going at that stage. So there was a lot of team fight damage that came out just because of his good initiation. With Clitzy Bananas, who just uh, wasn't doing that much damage, but just constantly sat and wailed from the back of the team fights, just hitting uh, constantly and managed to get a couple of kills as well. Hmm. Let's have a look at how the golden experience graphs are uh, shaping up here. BVD Emotion getting to that 10k crest and then. Dropping down, but picking it up again. Probably all the downtime while they were dead after that failed engagement. In terms of experience, they've lost about 2,000, or well, maybe 3,000 experience advantage, but they're still way in the lead. And I hear an arrow going off somewhere. It's not going to connect. It's just anymore. fishing in middle, yeah. Fitzy Bananas is heading. He's got his Lincolns up, and he's heading towards. It looks like a Manta style. Shaquille O'Neal maybe in a little bit of trouble here, as there's no dust. He's go going to re-engage. They're going on Fitzy Bananas. A lot of damage coming forward there. The flame break doing. A, a great, great slowdown there, but oh. S-Blade plus um, ulti from SF is too much, and both the Batrider and the Morphling fall. And those are the two most uh, farmed heroes, I would guess. Yeah. On Oh, actually, Doombringer with Devour is uh, sneaking on up there, Batrider falling off, probably with all his deaths, as the final outer tower falls for Energy Esports. Bravado only dropping one tower this game. And Shaquille O'Neal has got his Scotty on his way, on the courier. Should be here in the next couple of seconds. He actually had uh, an ultimate orb which got destroyed by one of the guys from the energy side. Huh. So his timing would have been a lot easier. Mm. Um, I believe Seam took it and threw it, like, pretty much dropped it before dying in a fight. <laughs> Trolling happening in your own team. Uh, just tells you how confident that these BBD guys are feeling at the moment. Sacrificing and items to the greater fray. Yeah, tier 3 tower is going to take the fall. There's a lot of pressure coming on to this melee rax over here. Maybe random here is looking to engage. There's a call coming in the mid lane, but just to just to no avail. The mid tower is maybe going to take the fall here. Shaquille O'Neal looking for a setup here as uh, Flores also runs in. They're going ape on the on the melee rax here. The arrow coming forward and the, they're splitting their damage a little bit poorly. Nice stun. The blink engage RP onto two. Blob is going to die before he can do anything. Lasso hasn't been used yet, but they get a kill on Axe and the S blade coming out of players here. He hasn't been targeted down very successfully. Doom goes on to Shaquille O'Neal. He's going to die, but he's trying to take someone with him as uh, he finally gets brought down. Three are dead for Bravado and maybe the fourth. As, this is a team uh, wipe. Actually, team wipe. Ultra kill going the way of Doron. I don't know how Energy managed to hold two fights in a row like that. They didn't even lose their axe, and the melee axe is going to heal up over the next 200 seconds to full HP. This is going to be rush off for this as well. In terms of the XP, I think we're going to see... Actually, for some reason, the gold graph still spiked up there. But in terms of XP, we'll see a downward spiral, and rush is definitely going to take the fall here. BVD aren't going to be alive in time to, to be able to defend us. I think that BVD needs to be a little bit careful here. I feel that Ian actually has harder carry towards the late game than... I mean, the SF and Potom are really good, but 
they're generally considered to be more... I suppose F SF is quite a hard carry, but Potom is more semi-carry. Where yeah. Doom and Morphling are, can both carry extremely hard towards the late game. I think that was just a really great play over there by Doom. Mm -hmm. He's been, I think, the MVP for yeah. energy this game. Yeah, he's my MVP as well. Another great blink uh, stun in that fight. I think onto three as the Batrider came in over the top of him uh, with the Clockwork Hook. So just the initiation coming up from Ian is really uh, starting to what, cause some problems. The initiation, I think. Like, the, yeah. the Clockwork waited for so long. I think we're going to need to see some sort of, you know, big play, big pick off on the Batrider or the Doombringer. And that's uh, like the, the way for Provider to breach high ground. Other than that, they just have to like spread out and not get caught by good stuns and good lessus. The problem with that is then they get picked off by the Batrider. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the Batrider, he's picked up his boots of travel now. In terms of like actual just kills and deaths, he hasn't had the greatest game, 7 for 8 for 12. It was a lot worse though, about 5 or 10 minutes yeah. ago. I think he, he got a double kill in that fight. He picked up an ultra kill in the last fight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean... Sorry, yeah, he got an ultra kill then, yeah. and the fight before was a double. Yeah. So, I mean, he was probably sitting at like one for like one for five at a yeah. stage in this game. Maybe a little bit maybe a little bit better than that. But yeah, he wasn't having the greatest game. No, he's definitely coming coming back and continuing to pick up items. He may look towards a BKB a BKB now just to stop uh, stop that extra magic damage from Yeah, they're using Morana ulti. I think they're gonna go blink RP in this mid lane maybe. Nosebleed gets one hit, two hit, he, oh, the arrow comes forward and they pick him off. Very important hero when it comes to defending. It's going to be a blink attempt to scare. He does buy back and Seam has got going wild in the middle here. Shaquille O'Neal gets zoomed up once again. RP goes on to two, it's Blob and Clitzy Bananas who get RP'd up here, but the damage is not forthcoming. Scant gets brought down on the back lines here. Doom is doing a lot of damage, but he's getting taken out by Seam and also by, um, by the Magnus. And, DVD are just getting repelled time and time again here. This is another team fight that's gonna. Is it gonna be another team wipe? We've got three down at the moment. Shaquille and Neil still alive. They do have a gem on the bat rider, so they gotta be able to see him and they gotta bring him down. That's four down on the side of BVD. For no losses on the side of EN. So BVD are kind of, you know, not necessarily trolling, but not playing like the kind of, you know, let's go win this Dota so we can go home early. Uh, type of uh, type of Dota, and if you see a Staff of Wizardry coming up on Axia, I don't know if they've gone into panic mode yet. I mean, they definitely know that they, they, they still can win this, but they're just making it much harder for themselves. We see Ian grouping up and now beginning to move mid. We can see the gold graph is beginning to head back down towards zero. The experience graph has really made a huge jump down, and it's only on 4,000 experience advantage here. Let's have a look at the levels because... I have a feeling that, yeah, not level 16 up on uh, a lot of the players on both sides here. Yeah, half the team, uh, half the players in, in these teams haven't got to level 16. It's actually uh, EN that have the most players at level 16, with three compared to just the two of BVD at the moment, so... Yeah. Accident 16 isn't that huge, though. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's quite significant. It does drop down uh, the cooldown by 10 seconds, increases the mana cost a bit. Not really a problem here for Seam. I think it's the uh, threshold which is the biggest, the biggest uh, deal with getting to level 16 on that axe, just on the culling blade, being able to cull from a much higher, much higher HP. Yeah, but I mean, most of the time he's been wanting to make culls like that, it hasn't been any time, like any, any amount of time in the recent time when uh, yeah. he's been close to 16. It was like, I think he messed up once. Oh, there's a blink engagement on Flares in the bottom lane here. Flares is going to go down, the Doom is ready, so... This is going to be a free kill on, on, on the carry. I mean, there's there's absolutely like one 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 ward up here for uh, for Bravado Gaming at the moment. Their vision is really, really horrible. 3,600 gold up on the Batrider. He's feeling extremely rich. I think he should start heading towards that BKB right now. And uh, he Ultimate, or, or no, Eagle Song for Plitzy Bananas sitting on the courier. So he's almost got, he's got an F Blade. He's managed to just pick that up now. And a Shiver on Doom. So core items are just continuing to flow for the side of EN, where the mm. item progression has sort of stopped for the moment for, for BBD. Yeah, we see that. A lot of cheering coming out. As I believe Energy Esports just took the Call of Duty Ghosts. Definitely going to make the crowd a little bit quieter, but 
Provider Gaming now a little bit up against the ropes here in game number two. They still have the advantage, but you can feel the momentum is definitely against them. Aegis is going to get taken back in a minute. I think this is what Bravado are kind of waiting for. Pot, let Pot and respawn, let the Aegis expire, and then, then we're going to see some plays, I think, from both sides. Sheevas is up on the Doom. Is uh, even a casual Ogre Club on the Dazzle. And Batrider is going to hold money for buyback. There's a force stuff just picked up by the Axe. There's, there's just items coming for everyone in this game. Yeah, um... Uh, four scans. Four scans. Uh, four for three for 14. Hasn't managed to pick up a Blink Dagger yet. Yeah, his item regression has just fully stopped. They're gonna... Uh, Ian are under the cover of smoke and they're gonna see the DD. They're not gonna take it just in case, uh... BB have got a ward there, but they're gonna catch... Oh no, they're gonna catch our flares again. The Doom comes out, the Lasso comes out. And this is just flares feeding continuously to this combination of the... Of the twins. And uh, we see that it is going to be a, uh, a zero steal there, using the shadow wave at the last second. Donnie is trying to put some pressure in the top lane though. But with that kill coming in, we see Clockwork picking up another item. The empower on Shadow Team means he hits like a truck, and he's just pushing this top lane. There are, uh, however, a couple of players for energy in um, in the mid lane who are going to just try push in there. But yeah, provided going for the sneaky split push here, they're going for the trade. The Morphling coming back in, they get the call off. There's no Aegis up at Conclusive Bananas. The runs back though. Nice stun onto Steam. They get the Weave off. And Shaquille O'Neal's taking a lot of damage. He's going to get the mini stun from Dazzle. Is it going to do much? The RP comes forward. Wonderful RP. And everyone's so low. We see the gems on the ground here. We're going to see a BB get caught out. And Doron somehow living through all of that. Conclusive Bananas on like 1 HP as he morphs some agility and strength back there. So a 4 for 1. Huge play over there for. Um, from, I guess, the once again, we have to just say, Doombringer did so much good work there. The blink stun got the Shivas off. PP getting called out by uh, by the Doombringer. He actually needs the bathroom. And they just, I mean, Ian are actually slowly have clawed themselves back into the position where the XP graph is actually finally in the lead for the first time, dropping about, oh, the game is paused, this drop, but it's at about the 4,000 mark in favor of... Uh, yeah, I think a little bit more than that, 5,270 5, or something. Yeah, and we should see and we should see the gold graph dip down even more now uh, once it uh, once it updates after that last fight. So, Ian are looking in a really good position to actually maybe take a game or feel the emotion here. Knock on wood. Yeah. I'm knocking on wood. Uh, the white jinx it. Yeah, it is uh, dire times here, and Ian takes the kill lead as well, 34 to 31. We did see Bravado at one stage. I mean, you know, Bravado Blue were when Bravado Blue were playing, they they were way, way, way ahead in terms of kills against Energy Esports mm -hmm. and against Fudge actually in, yeah. uh, in their game. But you know, the gold gold was dead even. So in this game, slow at advantage to Bravado Emo, but they're beginning to feed quite a lot, and they still have two players who are not in 16 Axe and also the the band but i mean they've tried some very crazy things here they've, they've got the best mm -hmm. middle play, mid player in the country who was pushing axe they have uh, like mm -hmm. a huge switch around in terms of roles habibi playing in the off lane as opposed to donny yeah and they're gonna get punished for it well they are getting punished for it whether or not that converts into a game victory whether or not that converts into the match of victory if it does i think they'll be kinking themselves yeah, I think they, they, I mean, they were in a really good position, but forced a couple of team fights, tried to break high ground a couple of times, and uh, the good initiation from the Batride and Doom just continuously pro provided Ian with team fight wins, to, so they managed to get themselves back in the game here. Uh, are they going to be able to make anything off these four deaths? I think they could probably look towards the T2 bottom. Um, Batrider has got boots to travel if i'm not mistaken 20 seconds cooldown on that yeah. so he won't be able to get there anytime soon but there's i mean there's so much gold on the side of ian zero has got three thousand gold to his name a gem and an ogre club and a casual cloak so he's not doing too bad nosebleed's picked up his argonum scepter we've got three thousand gold and a and a ultimate orb up on batrider so he may be going towards a scardi i don't know what the items some of the items in this game are pretty crazy look at marana's items he went like S blade mm -hmm. in the first. S blade first, going yeah. Back, going back for a BKB. I think he realized that, but at, I mean, he's been doomed so hot and heavy and so often that I don't think a BKB is actually going to make much difference to him surviving in these fights. 
And let's have a quick look at the fantasy points, seeing as these are the most important ones. It's uh, Scant. It's actually Scant who's been making so many assists and not dying. And uh, Flares has just been hitting so many creeps who are uh, leading the charge. 11.6 and 11.3 for them. For Hot on their tail is that right, 11.3. So many assists getting you fantasy points. But moving back to the gulp and the net graph, you can see that it is still the Bravado guys who are farming the best, but they're also dying a lot. Mm -hmm. well, top two on SF and Pilot, but followed shortly thereafter. I mean, Clutchy Bananas is just going 10, 10 less gold per minute than, than the bottom. So, I mean, he's really not doing too bad. And he's got a couple. He's 5 for 3, 11, 212 creep kills. He's got his F play. He's picked up a Yasha. So, Clutchy's most likely going to go for that Manta next. Yeah, this is the type of game that Clitzy really likes to really likes to play. Mm -hmm. He's on a, on, a, on a hard carry. His team has done a, an excellent job to keep them in the game, keep them competitive, keep it close, and it's boiling down to his ability to just out farm and uh, out out survive, I guess, the the Shadow Fiend and the Marana. But it is a dual core versus a single core, so Morphling is an exceptional carry. So it's gonna be hard for them to deal with it, but you know, not not impossible. Yeah, we do have uh, we do have the Doom as well. He can be seen as sort of a, a a call. He's picked up his shivers, so he may go towards maybe a heart or something next. Yeah, the, the maybe an AC. I think mm -hmm. that would be yeah. the starting for him to get. The thing is that like he's he's got this utility build. The aura carrier is very natural on a Doombringer, but I think the issue with this is just you know he does, doesn't have right click like items at the moment. No, yeah. like Sanjin Yasha, no. I'd really like to see an Abyssal Blade actually come up on him. Mm -hmm. and more, just, just more lockdown. Just more lockdown, yeah. yeah. Morphling uh, gets a tower in the bot lane, and BBD have lost all of their outer towers as well now, so it's just a one tower advantage. This uh, bottom tier 3 for energy has fallen. 31 to 35. I'm a little bit surprised that the energy uh, supporters haven't got behind their, their Dota team. Yeah, I mean, energy is playing the hell out of this game too here in this best of five finals, so. Don't see. I imagine that they should get some crowd support sometime soon. Now that their their card guys have managed to win, so mm. Blob is just picking out the fact that Shaq O'Neal is here. So he's just going to TP out. Their yeah, bravado getting uh, bested in both the CS and the card finals. I mean, must be quite annoying for them. If they lose third to two, it'll be a full rout by Energy Esports. But bravado is still sitting comfy here, two two game advantage, and. This is looking scary though for Bravado Emotion. This may be Bravado's time to actually... Uh, there are only three people in the rush by, so they've got four heroes standing by. They've got RP up, they've got Axe who can blink and call. And Potom has picked up his BKB, so if they actually uh, figure out that the arrow's going to come and it's going to land on Klitsy, this could be uh, this could be absolutely tragic. The arrow's just going to try and uh, hold them off for the meantime. Weave goes off on his team, so he wants to try to keep them alive. The Doom is absolutely nowhere close to this battle, so... the Rush is going to go down. BBD decide not to not to fight it for the meantime, and that's yeah, going to be another rush on Klitsy. SF was too far away. He needs to get boots to travel, I think. And here comes that cheap stick on the bat rider. Very very important item. Remember what I said at the beginning of the fight? I'm um, sorry, beginning of the game, where I was like, so this is a, like the first game we've seen a team manage to get bat rider, mm -hmm. and his players are going to be like instrumental if they win this game. And I really really think that bat riders also played exceptionally well in this game. Yeah. He's doing a hell of a job. I mean, he had such a bad start. Yeah. Uh, the early gank from Skank, Skant uh, just ensured that SF was made. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's a mixture between Skant, Skant and Gank. Skank. <laughs> well, in this case, it's yeah, very appropriate that the combination is Skanky up. <laughs> so Magnus has actually gone back and picked up a mech for his own team. Um, which is, I think, one of the first sort of team fight, well, sort of team items I've actually seen come up on Bravado Emotion. They usually go for things like Dagons and uh, skip things like Pipes and Mechs, but things are obviously getting a little bit serious here on in the BVD camp. With the Golden XP graph, uh, looking at it, it's actually, the gold is pretty much zero. So, Ian have managed to claw that, claw that back completely. And the XP yeah. graph is fairly in their favor by about 8,000 now. Ian are also death falling mid and Bravado not really in a position to defend this at the moment. Uh, we can see that uh, Shadow Fiend, this is a TP scroll, 3,000 gold so he can can TP back, die and buy back and get, get involved. 
and uh, all the TPs are coming back except for uh, Murata, who actually very, very far away and no TP scroll on him. Glyph has gone off. It's actually huge, he doesn't have buyback. Oh, and they might manage to catch him out here. He gets sheeps on the low ground, flares in a lot of trouble. He gets uh, brought down just at the end. It huge might... RP! Huge RP. And we're going to see a skewer as well. No, nice play over there. Nosebleeds and dodges out. It's Donny on Do Nosebleeds here. They're going to bring him down. They've just slept up Clipsy Bananas. No one is there to wake him up. And they're going to try to just bring down Blob. They're ignoring Clipsy Bananas. He's going to be back in a second here. Seems trying to man fight him. And they're going to bring him down. How did Bravado do that? They lost their carry to start the fight. And they get a wonderful RP and bring down four of the energy players. Just Morphling is alive. My throat is pretty gone. They're still trying to go on the Morphling, but he manages to, to go to his image, and he's going to die. He's going to come back with full HP and mana, and the skewer's got to be excellent here, and he's going to wave to the low ground. There's going to be Blink in just a second. Are we going to see them chase it up? No, they're not. The they're RP not. from Magnus <laughs> secured the 544 for Bravado. What an RP coming up from Mr. Assman. Those clutch players, man. And the scary thing is just that Morphling there wasn't involved in that fight because like after that initial great play, he wasn't involved in the fight at all. Mm -hmm. They managed to just completely isolate him. No one was there to wake him up. Doom buys back into the game. And uh, I think that was a little bit of a forced reaction here. This is going to hurt the economy for Energy Esports. Yeah, the Doom forcing a buyback. Uh, he's got picked up a Sanj, so he's most likely going to be going for that uh, Heaven's Hellbird. What did Donny spend some gold on? Because he had 3,000 gold earlier. He's only got 2,000 gold now. Oh, he's going for the full butterfly, actually. The problem is if he finishes that off, he's not going to have a uh, buyback. Yeah, That's something that had a problem with in the last fight. Is he just, just finished up the Majorna, and um, as a result, didn't have enough money to buy back. Yeah. That could have been it's... really costly. If the fight didn't mm -hmm. go so, so yeah. well, it would have been, you know, G to the GG. If that but, Magnus uh, didn't get four people in his RP, that was going to yeah. be game, pretty much. And uh, we do see the scores are very, very tight here. Seam is in trouble here. He's just going to go down. That's 83 seconds on Seam that he's going to be out of the fight. And L's in the top lane getting gived up by Titsy Bananas. The arrow comes onto nosebleeds. A lot of DPS. Majolna's going in on him. He has the bat rider. They're going to catch Lioness. Doom, RP on three. Doesn't actually catch. And the, the RP got S cancelled, that's why it didn't catch. And Lioness is doomed up there, but he's going to bring down one person with him. It's going to be the Clockwork, who buys back straight away. The Blink, nice attempt to get out. The level death does a mini stun, catching Magnus out. And this looks like Bravado Gaming are going to go into a fourth game here, as uh, they're getting what? And I don't know if any of them can buy back to defend this. It's just Magnus who can buy back. They carry, one carry is dead. Shaquille O'Neal, he's got Butterfly, but is he going to be able to man fight? against the power here. Is, this, is it too early to say it really? Is it unfair to say that uh, they're looking like they're going to get knocked out here? Or knocked out of this game? This uh, this could potentially be the first game that Provide Emotion lose this year. The f well, in South Africa. In South Africa, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they've still got... Buyback comes out from Magnus, but he doesn't have RP for, for 50 seconds. So I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do here. I think he's pretty much just going to be fodder for Clitzy Bananas if uh, he decides just to get F bladed. He does have the mech though, so that's a fairly important T-Fight item to be using his team. They're just going to spam out, but I mean, the glyph, there is no glyph on the side of BBD, so they're just going to be able to wreck this tower. 17 seconds until we see uh, him coming back, and the Manta illusions of Donny are just trying to go to Tanya. Clitzy Bananas trying to bring down the Malaya Axe, positioning to get a, a safe place, and Bravado are happy now. They're, well, they, they're happy to give up their Axe, they know if they try fight here, they're only going to do more damage to themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clockwork just hooking to an ally. They're going to move back and make their way, maybe to the Rosh Pit once it's up. But, I mean, this is just this is just a sorry state of affairs. This is something like we saw in uh, the Joined Oda League, where Bravada Blue played against Bravada Emotion. And Bravada Blue got a Rax on the bottom lane and didn't manage to convert the game. But, you know, did that early damage. And Bravada Black, you know, they played it perfectly. They moved back mm -hmm. when they needed to move back. They... They pushed when they needed to push, and they, they responded to the threats very well. And yeah. Doron here is, is looking for a play on uh, on the Shadow Fiend here. But with the Butterfly up now, I think that he can still go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Maybe Lifesteal is something that he could be 
could be looking at. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I think Lifesteal is something that he definitely needs to go for. If he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clissy Bananas. Clissy Bananas has already got the Helm of Dominator up. He's got uh, 5,500 gold in the bank. So we could see a Satanic coming out of him very soon. I think a Satanic would be a pretty excellent item. I would also like to see a Scotty though on him. Yeah. And, and the TP scroll obviously can go away. The Boots of Travel is also like an amazing item. But he hits so hard right now. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a majority of the physical damage in the team fights, just because Klutzy's hitting so hard, and he has so much backup. He's got Sierra providing the heals, he's got no three heroes with excellent initiations in the form of Lucifer, the Blink Dagger, and a Shivas. Uh, the Clockwork, who's picked up, uh, who's had his Argonauts for quite a while, so that's a 12 second hook timer. Plus the Bat, who's got his Sheep as well as uh, as well as the Lassoo, so I mean, he can go in and pretty much shut down two, two people before the fight even starts. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Proben Twins are just, you know, Captain Disable in this game here. Mm -hmm. The Batrider and the, uh, and El, El Dumarino. Yeah, El Dumarino, still, still my MVP for this match so far. He's yeah, picked up his Heaven's Hellbird. And this is turning into be one of those, uh, El Classicos between, uh, Energy Esports and Bravada Gaming. Uh, <laughs> The players might have swapped sides, and or like the the teams have you know reformed in the, in this. Oh, uh, Potter may be in trouble. Or they may they may catch Seam. Oh, Doom is are. a long way from home, and uh, the arrow's going to go off, but not going to be able. Seam's going to get stuck on the high ground for the moment. But this uh, Doran uh, realizes that he may be up, uh, maybe a crab creep without a paddle here, so he's just going to get out. Yeah, I think a good disengage decision by him there. Uh, Moran has got enough gold for buyback at the stage, and that's also like a, a huge, mm -hmm. huge factor. You can see energy just posturing around the uh, the Roshan pit. There's a casual TP scroll in there that someone was going to want to grab. As uh, yeah, Morana, I mean, ten for ten for eleven. Not the huge impact he'd like. He gets sheeped up now, and is gets pulled back. There's and doomed. He's going to go down again. Yeah, he's going to die here. I think he's going to have to be forced to buy back if, if Energy push all mid here. I think Energy have to go mid just to force that buy back. Yeah, pretty much now between uh, going mid and securing that rush, which is going to be up in about uh, 40 seconds or so. Check the amount of urn charges on Dazzle. 10 urn charges on him. Oh, he's feeling rich with that urn. And he's managed to pick up an Argonim Scepter as well, so that he's weave is... Yeah. So, I mean, he's actually feeling really staunch with 1,800 HP. Yeah, the buyback status is the most important tab at the moment. Three of uh, Two of Bravado can buy back at the moment, SF and the Marana, and uh, Batrider can also buy back for for Energy Esports. Like, moving forward here, yeah, they're going to try to bring down Clancy Bananas. Uh, actually, they're going to go on zero instead. Sheep going off. A big haul coming in from Seam. No, he's actually just going to die straight up. Doom does so much damage to him, and... Donnie on the side doesn't do much. Magnus gets a kill in the middle. Donnie gets one kill before dying. He buys back straight away. And F Blade going off onto Ian Blob. And Linus moving into position. He gets one right click. He doesn't get the second. The arrow's not going to be good enough. The turn speed is nerfed so much by a single level of uh, of sticky napalm. And he's going to TP out in there. Meanwhile, Clitzy Banana is trying to rush by himself. He's got butters now. He's also got uh, the Ethereal Blade. So. He's going to try bring down Rush. He's going to... What's he going to get rid of, though? I mean, Helmet of Dominates on the floor. The Couriers should be flying out to pick that up. And Doom just getting bashed. f -Blade actually getting forced onto Rush. <laughs> so he doesn't, doesn't get a kill on, uh, on his Batrider friend. Oh, that would have been tragic if the Batrider had lost his life to a, a random Rashawn Vax. But he's going to get a cheese because of it. So he's feeling perfectly good. That is the third Rashawn kill. And Clutter Bananas gets himself... Another Aegis. He may he may want to pick up Boots of Travel here sometime soon. I mean, he's pretty much running out of spots. He's running out of space. I mean, he's got as much farm as he can almost get. And the thing is that Marana still has another full item slot in the hand of the Midas that, mm -hmm. uh, that can get sold out. And he can also finish this Demon Edge into a, like, maybe an MKD or a Crypt Machine. Yeah. And the energy up, I would wager, I hit on experience and gold now. Definitely in the gold. 2,000 in their favor. Experience has been in their favor for a while. Uh, it's currently sitting about the 8,000 experience advantage. And, I mean, I kind of agree with what you were saying and how the Doom's getting items that are, like, helping out his team, but the, his item progression has slowed down a lot. Mm -hmm. He's uh, 11 for 4, but 25 assists. I mean, he's been involved in 36 of the... Watch your middle. This, this, 
Oh, the Moonlight Shadow goes off, but they know that it's there. The RP goes off, but catches, catches three, two. Zero's trying to... Uh, but Knoxville's just going to instantly go down. Seam clicks in, and he's trying to get as much damage done as possible, but he gets cogged in and just immediately killed. So that's two down for 70 seconds on the side of BBD. Meanwhile, in the back, uh, yeah, they do manage to pick off the Doom. The, the problem is that Doom can buy back, whereas uh, Magnus can't, and neither can the Axe. So this is going to be a 3v5 fight in the mid lane here, and Energy are going to push the issue. They've taken bottom melee racks, the range racks is really low, and uh, not healing up because it is the range racks. The arrow goes towards the mid, and I think Bravado are going to be knocked out of this. They rack, the Glyph gets caught, uh, popped off there, but Eclipse Banana is in oh, the Oh! Flares is, in, is, is just dead. Eclipse Banana is... Uh, and that's Flares down for 100 seconds. Zero might have to shell a grave just to make sure that he's going to stay alive. Blob showing him the fact that he's back in. And uh, this is going to be SF going down. And that's GG. And Energy Esports definitely not uh, expected to take a game off Bravado. But they've managed to do it. And the score is now 2-1. to one. Emotion still need that one game. So when Energy require a flawless run in the remaining two games. If they want to win it. Uh, and I think they're going to be so happy with this Bravado. Do they know how to lose? That's the question. That is the biggest question right now. This is the first loss in the local scene that we've seen from uh, from the Ian side, and I believe it's the first loss on land that they've had in an extremely long time. And yeah. uh, losing on land is, is a, has an extreme mental effect on you, and we are so glad that Ian managed to bring us an extra game in this final. So the score, guys, 2-1 two, two to one going the way of Bravado Gaming. This is a best of five, so we're going to have a short break. I think the players just want to relax. That was a 53-minute bender. Yeah. And all the other games are done, so I assume that all the players from the other teams, uh, Energy and Bravado, as well as the other remaining teams, are just going to hover around the uh, the Bravado and Energy side. They are sitting right next to each other, face to face. So we're hopefully going to be seeing game number four kicking off in the next few minutes. I can see the admins are hovering around me. And um, it's quarter to three here, so I would think in the next five minutes we should be getting the game underway. I see a random hero walking towards me. He's got a cheeky grin on his face. He knows that he unleashed the dragon in that last game. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. This was game number three of uh, a best of five between Bravado Emotion and Energy. And as Luxwell joining me is Demonic. And uh, we'd just like to thank Asus as well as Steel Series uh, for sponsoring the prizes in this tournament. We'll be back in a sh short break. Uh, actually, that makes no sense. We'll be, bre we'll be back after a short break. It's been a long day, it's been a long weekend. But uh, there's definitely more Dota coming up before this is going to come to a close. We'll check you in just a few moments.